In this video, I am going to cover hypothesis testing for the difference between two proportions using the TI-84. Um, there are five steps that need to be completed. The first thing you need to do is to make sure that um, the samples are large enough so that it is, can be a normal sampling distribution. So um, you can do that by finding P bar and then multiplying each of the um, each of the sample sizes by P bar and Q bar. Okay. Then you need to state your null and alternative hypotheses and notice they compare the population proportions for each um, the first set and the second set. P always represents population proportion. P hat represents the um, sample proportion. Okay. Then you find the p-value using the two-prop z-test and you use that p-value um, to determine if you reject or fail to reject HO by comparing it to alpha. Then you use the following chart to determine how you're going to word your final conclusion. Let's look at this first example. In a sample of 5,240 female toddlers and 6,190 male toddlers, 2,201 female toddlers ate vegetables daily and 2,351 male toddlers ate, ate vegetables daily. At a 1%, oh, I'm sorry, at a 5% level of significance, test the claim that the proportion of female toddlers that eat, eat vegetables daily is greater than the proportion of male toddlers that eat vegetables daily. So we'll let uh, set 1 be females and set 2 be males. So we want to test the claim that P1 is greater than P2. So that's my claim. Okay, so if P1 uh, is greater than P2 is my claim, then that is HA, that's the alternative hypothesis. Okay, now the opposite of that will be my null hypothesis which since this is greater than this will be a less than and we'll include an inequality symbol I'm sorry an equality symbol now I do need to make sure that um, P bar and Q bar times N1 and N2 um, is greater than 5 in this case it definitely is um, because X1 is equal to well actually let me do N1 first N1 is my sample size, which is 5240, and X1 is the amount of females who eat, so 2201, and 2 is the sample size of males, um, X2 is 2351. So you can find P bar by just doing X1 plus X2 over N1 plus N2. And so 2201 plus 2351 over 5240 plus 6190. Okay. Um, two two zero one divided by five two four zero plus six one nine zero it's approximately equal to thirty nine percent okay and then q bar is 1 minus p bar. So I can just do 1 minus the previous answer. Um, so it's approximately equal to 0 0.610. Okay. So, um, you know, if you do 39% of a number this big or 61% of a number these big it's definitely be going to be greater than five so you don't really need to test it with this one um, if they were smaller then you might want to do it but I'm I'm not gonna waste time doing it okay so the next thing I want to do is 
find my p-value by using the chuprop z-test. So I go to stat, over to test, chuprop z-test is number six. Okay, and I gotta put my values in. So x1 is 2201. Enter. Um, N1 is 5240. X2 is 6190. Oops, I'm sorry. Um, X2 is 2351. And N2 is 6190. Then I need to make sure that I have the alternative, hypo um, the alternative hypothesis highlighted. So I need to make sure I highlight this one and press Enter. And then I go down to calculate calculate. So P is equal to point nine 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 a bunch of nines. I'm gonna I'm gonna just write them all out so I don't have to write um, how many is that five? So I'm not just writing one. Okay. So alpha is point zero five. P is definitely greater than alpha, so that means I fail to reject. HO. Whenever you fail to reject H, I'm sorry, whenever P is greater than alpha, you fail to reject HO. Um, what I always remember is if you have the greater than symbol, it's the one with more words. The less than symbol is the one with less words. Okay, so now I need to use this decision chart to determine um, how I'm going to word my final answer. So is the claim HO? No. Did I reject HO? No. So I'd say there is not enough evidence to support the claim. Eat veggies daily is greater than the proportion of male toddlers. In a study of 200 randomly selected adult females and 250 randomly selected adult males, 30 of 30% 30 of the females and 38% of the males said they smoked at least one cigarette in the last month. Where's my thing? Okay. At a 10% level of significance, test the claim that there is a difference between the proportion of females and the proportion of males that smoked at least one cigarette in the last month. So we'll let females be one, males be two. So we're testing the claim that P1 is not equal to P2, that there's a difference. It doesn't say anything about one being greater than the other, it just says that there is a difference. So this will be my claim. And since it contains a not equal to symbol, that means it's HA. HO is the opposite of that. So P1 is equal to P2. Okay, so my null hypothesis um, and my alternative hypothesis are stated. Now I do need to check and see if I can actually do this. Um, I I know I have up, th up top that you should test this um, first. I usually do it last because most of the pro uh, not last, I usually do it afterwards because most of the problems you're going to get are actually going to meet this criteria. Um, but let's go ahead and write out all our information. So N1 is equal to 200. Let's see, x1 we don't have. x1 we can find by doing p hat 1 times n1. And p hat 1 is the proportion of females who smoke. So p hat 1 is equal to 0.3. So it's equal to 0.3 times 200. 
So 1.3 times 200 is equal to 60. Okay, um, and I'm just going to do it down here. N2 is equal to 250. X1 I can find by doing P hat 2 times N2 or what was it? Um, P hat 2 is equal to 38 percent. So 0.38 times 250 should be what, like 95.38 times 250. 95. So that's my x1. I'm sorry, that should be x2. Excuse me. Okay, so if I want to find p bar, I do x1 plus x2 over n1 plus n2. So p bar is, um, x1 is 60 plus 95, 200 plus 250. Okay, so approximately Just change that to approximately. Erase that. Okay, approximately equal to 0.344, and Q bar is equal to 1 minus P bar, which is approximately equal to 1 minus previous answer 0.656. Okay, so. I'm not going to perform the multiplication because I can tell just by looking at it that 34% of 200 and 250 is definitely bigger than 5 and if that is then so is Q hat or the 65% so that means I can do this so I'm going to go ahead and go to stat test 2 prop Z test number 6 now I'm just going to fill in my numbers here so X1 was 60 N1 is 200 now whenever you're given a problem like this where you're given p hat instead of x, um, it does ask for x, but you can also just stick it in the calculator like this. You could just do p hat um, times n, and it'll go ahead and give you the x1. Okay, um, x2 is 95, and n2 is 250. And the alternative hypothesis is not equal to, so I need to make sure I highlight that. And then I go down, press calculate. So there's a few different p's here. This is the p we're looking for, though. p is equal to 0 0.076. Okay, so p um, is definitely bigger than, I'm sorry, definitely smaller than alpha because alpha was point one, so P is less than alpha, which means I reject HO. Okay, so now I just need to figure out how I'm going to word my um, final answer, and it's based on this up here. Is the claim HO? No. Do you reject HO? Yes. So I say there is enough evidence to support the claim. there is a difference in the proportion of male and female smokers. Okay. 
So it's not really too difficult to do these proportion problems. I think they're usually actually easier than the main ones. Um, this is something that might get you if you forget to check this, um, but usually, like I said, most of them you could just jump straight to this because most of the problems you're going to get are going to meet this criteria. This is more like if you're doing it, um, doing a problem that isn't in your book, like you're doing your own research or something. But um, yeah, and it uses the same flowchart as all other hypothesis testing, it uses the same notion of p-value and um, the level of significance. So yeah, it's not really too bad.